everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. We've got a lot to cover, and I know we've only got like 50 or 45 minutes or so. Um, before I make introductions and kind of get into it, I just kind of like to get a lay of the land. So who in here is on the marketing or sales side within an organization? Okay. Who in here would say you're like more of the business owner, you're an entrepreneur, you run a small business? Okay. Who in here is on the IT side? Okay. There's a lot of mixed hands. Who in here does everything? Yeah. Okay. Good. So if you're looking for a very technical presentation, you are certainly in the wrong place, all right? So this is much more on the strategy, uh, marketing, sales side of things. Um, and so my name is Adam Wade, uh, Marketing Director at Media Current. I'm joined here by Carl Worth, uh, CEO and founder of Evergage. And today we're going to be talking about um, conversions and driving conversions to your website. And I'm going to get to that in just a second. But just a little bit about Media Current. We're an Atlanta based web development agency. Obviously, we specialize in Drupal open source. Um, we, have, we love our customers. We have a ri wide range of portfolio from uh, a lot of university systems, obviously, UGA, Georgia.gov, Miami Dolphins, Habitat for Humanity, the Weather Channel. Um, anyone here from the Weather Channel? Just wanted to, all right, welcome, guys. Um, so anyhow, yeah, we, we love our customers. We have a great time with them. And not only do we help on the design and development side, but we also help them with their entire online goal. So, you know, conversion optimization, SEO, making sure that not only is the design and the development up to par in what they want, but are they achieving their entire goals that they have with their website? Ultimately, are they driving conversions and revenue generating projects? I'm going to let Carl just kind of introduce Evergage. Yeah. Hi, Carl Worth. I'm the CEO and founder of Evergage. We're a Boston-based company, three years old. And what we do is help you turn your website into a better conversion machine, or as we're going to be talking about in, in this talk, how do you help your website become your very best salesperson by making it respond to each person uniquely based on who they are and what they've done? So we've been helping a lot of large companies with that. We're not a consultancy. We, we partner with Media Current and, and um, we, we're a technology company. So we, we have software and services and a Drupal module that helps to do that. And some of the companies we're working with are Acquia, uh, Gardeners on the e-commerce side, big hosting companies like uh, Bluehost, Gatorhost, EIG, and uh, Constant Contact is also here. Yeah, cool. Okay, so, um, and our Wi-Fi is not working today, so I had to download this from a Google Docs to a presentation, so I, as a marketing guy, it like pains me that everything is not perfectly formatted and, and looking right, so um, apologies on that, and just bear with us as we go through here, but like I said, today what we're talking about is conversion, so most of you are interested in Drupal, you have a Drupal website, you're migrating over to Drupal, you're thinking about it, but Ultimately, the whole reason you're going with Drupal is obviously for the flexibility and all that, but you have a goal behind this. You want to drive revenue or drive conversions, and that's what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to come at it at two different angles. One is really identifying who your buyers are and, and segmenting and, and um, like specifying the content on your website directly to those buyers. Um, so I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to be very transparent and show you how we do some of that at Media Current. And then we're going to talk about it from what if someone comes to your website and you have no idea who they are or where they're at? Uh, how can you still personalize the content on your website in real time to an unknown visitor? And that's how where Evergage really comes in and helps with this whole personalization of visitors uh, that are not known, that haven't converted yet, and getting them to actually convert into projects and ultimately winning the deals with those. So um, first, let's start with content strategy. So just some baseline here. I'm sure most of you have heard of it and you've talked about in your organization, but obviously you know that there is a ton of competition on the web. And your website cannot stay static. It cannot stay the same year over year. You've obviously got to personalize it for mobile devices, and you know all of that, but you also have to make sure that the content on your website is fresh and up to date. I mean, how many of you heard about Google and the Hummingbird releases that they just they just put out? So very few of you. But basically, content is not only king, but it's really what's going to drive more visitors to your website and helping that top of the funnel thing, um, ultimately funneling down to paying customers. But you know, really targeting your content, identifying your buyer personas helps you to deliver the right content to the right person at the right time. And that's really where this whole mesh of like having a great 
designed website with the flexibility of Drupal and the power of personalizing your content specifically to your buyers really comes into play because if you're a buyer and you come to the website and the web experience is personalized to your buying questions and your concerns and where you're at in the buying cycle, it's like they're speaking right to you. And so you, um, we're going to talk through that and how you really document that. I'm very big on repeatable processes and making sure that the organization that you've put something in place can repeat over time. So we're going to talk through that a little bit. But um, this was me this morning getting dressed. Um, so obviously, one size does not fit all. You know that, right? Um, and content personalization isn't really anything new. I mean, if you think about, especially those of you that do marketing, you try to personalize email subject lines, or you personalize uh, you know, body, the copy on white papers and things like that to really personalize it towards a certain audience. But if you think about your website, nine times out of 10, I would say most of you in here, the stuff that's on your website is the same no matter who's coming there, whether they're a CMO ready to buy with the budget approved, or if they're a college student looking for a job, the content on your website doesn't change. And so, um, you know, think about Amazon.com as well. Like, they do a very good job of personalizing the content based on what you've bought in the past. Um, and, you know, so one of the things that you really need to do is to get inside your buyer's head. We're going to talk about how you can actually identify your buyer personas, some questions that you can begin to ask to really map this out. Um, and like I said, I'm big on creating repeatable processes. And this is, I know it's a little bit hard to read, and I apologize. Uh, again, migrating from Google Docs over to PowerPoint didn't work out so well for me. But um, when I say ad identifying your buyer personas, you're trying to get into the head of who actually buys your product. And not only just saying, okay, we think it's the CMO, or we know it's you know, the director of marketing, or we know this and that, but actually documenting that out so that you can, again, I, I'm going to say this probably several times, I'm a big advocate of repeatable processes. So when you have new hires, how many of you want to grow your organization and hire new teammates and hire the best? Okay, two of you? Okay. <laughs> All right, well, there we go. So when you're hiring folks, sales team, marketing team, um, client facing project managers, you want to be able to sell them like, hey, here's who we're going after. Here's the concerns that they have when buying our product or service. Here are the type of questions that they have. So really documenting that out. And it can be very simple. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. But like literally taking a picture of maybe, think about one of your ideal customers that you have right now. Everybody take a moment. Think about one of your customers that you're like, this is, they're great to work with. They had budget approved. Think about it for a second. OK, now take their picture off of LinkedIn or off of Facebook. Put it on a piece of paper. Jot down what their name is, what their title is. And then start to really think about the questions that they had when they were buying your product or service. Maybe pick up the phone and say, hey, can I take you to lunch? And talk through some of those things. Or call them up on the phone, send them a gift card afterwards. But what you're trying to do is to identify who it is that you're going after, what their concerns were in the buying process, and just summarizing that so that you can really train your organization, train your marketing team, train your sales team on what specifically it is that, um, how they need to answer these questions and how they need to really uh, personalize the content. Um, let me just make sure here, so I didn't miss anything. Okay, so let's talk through what some of those questions might be. Um, you know, David talked a lot about this morning in the keynote. Did you guys enjoy David Cummings? He's good, yeah. I like David, he's, an, he's a nice guy. But, you know, so they, not only did they use social media like LinkedIn to kind of find out what people were saying about their competitors and stuff, but that's also a great way to find out what your buyers are asking about your service or your product in the industry, right? So going out to social media, going out to LinkedIn groups, and just looking at the discussions, seeing what their questions are, and really, okay, this is a common thread question that a lot of these, you know, um, directors are having. Do we have content on our website that really answers those questions? So, like, what are their demographics? What are their interests? Um, who influences their product choice? What are their goals and problems to be solved? Where do they look for information? Um, and so really beginning to answer some of those questions will help you to really target your content um, based on uh, you know, their buying questions through the cycle. Yeah, take a picture of that. It's a tweetable moment as well. <laughs> and so 
once you say, okay, here, here we go, we've got our buyers identified, now what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at the content on your website and where your gaps are. And this is how we, this is how roughly how we do it at Media Current. I might walk away from the podium a little bit, so um, hopefully you can still hear me. But we start with um, what the questions are that they have in the buying cycle. Again, we've already kind of identified those. We know who, who the buyer personas are. What are the answers to those questions that your product or your service helps provide? And then take a look at your content on your website and say, okay, here are the questions that this director has when buying our service. Here are the answers to those questions. And here are where the gaps are in our own content that um, you know, doesn't help answer these questions. And that's where you begin to start saying, okay, now our content strategy is we want to make sure that we have fresh, relevant content coming out to our buyer personas regularly, frequently answering these questions, coming at it at different angles, customer testimonials, pricing guides, product sheets, white papers, ebooks. I know it can sound overwhelming, but what you need to do is just tackle it a little bit out of a time, little bit at a time. But your whole goal needs to be making sure that you're answering the questions that they have. Um, and here's here's the thing. This is how we uh, do it at Media Current, and I spelled this wrong. I apologize again. My daughter turns two tomorrow, and I have eighty something people coming to my house. So I had an, every evening. I had my wife had me doing certain things. But um, ha, as we progress our prospects through the buying process. This is what we do, right? So if they're in the interest phase or the awareness phase, they're, they're thinking about it, they, they kind of are ready to make a you know, decision on a product or service, um, we send them certain industry studies or blog posts that are very generic, very high level, and then as they move through the funnel into an interest and a consideration phase, our content gets very more specific to what their questions are and where they're at in the buying process. So obviously in the interest phase, it's case studies of work that we have done, or Drupal demos, or uh, very Drupal specific blog posts that uh, you know, have answered these certain questions or how we fix these certain problems, then down to pricing guide and customer testimonials. So we, do, we obviously are big advocates of marketing automation. A lot of this we've put into place and we have repeatable processes. Um, but you can start doing this even if you're not using a marketing automation. Just start laying the foundation of, okay, we've documented our buyer personas. We know what their questions are. We're going to take a look at the content that's on our site and figure out, are we truly answering the, the questions that our buyers have with the content on our site? And here's the deal. One way that you can tell if you're really answering those questions, are, are you getting conversions? And that's really what the whole point of all of this is about, right? I mean, why do we have websites? It's because we want folks to buy our product or service. And if your conversions are low, um, that is really bad. I apologize about that. Um, there, are, there are several reasons. Um, you know, obviously, uh, bad, layout. bad PowerPoint <laughs> design layout is a definite number one reason. This does not reflect the work of Media Current, I promise. <laughs> Right, date, right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This is great. So, um, you know, number one, they're not finding what they're looking for, okay? Here's, here's something that you can do. Take your website home to your partner, your wife, your next door neighbor, and say, okay, here's what we sell, or here's the product. I want you to get from point A to point B. And if they take, you know, more than like 15 seconds to kind of figure out where it is or what you do, then your audience is not finding what they're looking for on your website. So that's the first thing to take a look at. Number two, uh, you haven't given them a next step. So, and honestly, I, I see a lot of websites that are very guilty about this. They have great content and then it's just like, there's no next, there's no next step. There's no additional resources. There's no here, you know, in a very soft way, not a salesy way, contact us so we can talk about this. There's just no next step. There's no progression. After you've learned that this great resource or this great blog post, it just kind of ends there. And I'm just going to say this. I wasn't planning on saying this, but, um, you know, sometimes I think just specific examples are powerful. So at Media Current, um, we just released a, an, our own case study of how market automation, content strategy, and all that has really increased our own revenue, our own conversions, and I can send that to you if you want me to. It's on our website. 
Um, but as we began to take an audit last year, probably you know, a little bit before DrupalCamp Atlanta, we took a look at our website and looked at our call to actions and looked at the resources that we had on our page and were we actually doing this? Were we giving folks the next step? You know, some of it was okay. I wasn't super excited about it. And then I added additional resources and um, added call to action, stronger call to actions. And I forget off the top of my head now, but our conversion rate was like over 40% higher year over year than it was before. Um, and so I say this not because I'm like, hey, this is just what the books say and this is what the experts say. I say this because this is what Media Current has done real life and it has worked for us and, you know, um, so anyhow. And then your message isn't compelling. So, you know, are you truly the thought leaders? Are you really compelling your buyers that you're the best person, you're the best, you have their best interests in mind, here's your port our portfolio that speaks to this? And um, Dave Terry, one of the partners at Media Current says this all the time, like, are you saying what every other um, competitor in your field is saying? You know, can they all say the same thing? Or are you giving very specific examples that compel them to take the next step with you? Okay, and then finally, let's talk about, I'm gonna transition over to Carl. So we talked about the personalization factor. We talked about identifying your buyer personas and your target audience and really making sure that your website speaks specifically to the questions that they had. But what about these folks that come to your website that are unknown visitors? You have no idea who they are, they haven't converted. How can you personalize their web experience and make sure that you eventually move them through the funnel and convert them? So, Carl? Thanks. So, as Adam was talking, we're all trying to sell something. So let's, I want to hear what you guys are selling. And, but just to flush that thought out, even if you're a content site, you're trying to sell often time on site in order to get more ad revenue, right? If you're e-commerce, you're selling, um, that's obvious, whatever you're selling, right? If you're a B2B marketing website, you're selling enough information to try to get the lead, right? So we're all trying to sell something, convert people to a goal on the site. What are some of yours, if you don't mind just shouting them out? What are, what are some of Ebooks, training. training programs, consulting. consulting. Uh, okay, uh, uh, your school. You're trying to get them you know, convert to apply, I guess, and then and then to uh, hopefully get in. <laughs> yes. Any others? Donations. Donations. Yeah. Yeah. Software sales. Software. Okay. You sell the software itself, or are you trying to get the lead on the site? get the lead and then, then sell them, yeah. We're, we're kind of like that too. We get the lead on the site and then sell them directly. Any others? Compost. Say it again? Compost. Compost, cool. <laughs> Can your e-commerce purchase it? Right? Uh, no, no. But information about it, yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, so we're all trying to sell something. We're trying to convert people to, to the goal. And so what I'm talking about real-time personalization secrets, and what I want to argue, the big point I want to argue to is that our websites can be and actually have to be our best salespeople because people spend most of their time there. And even in a B2B marketing website scenario, people are spending 70 to 80% of their time anonymous researching before they raise their hand and say, oh, okay, you can call me and, and do a sales process. So for 80% of the sales cycle, they're anonymous. And, and who's selling them? Some in social and other places, but mostly your website. So your website has to be a good salesperson. So that begs the question, what's a good salesperson like? So I thought we could act this out. Do I have one brave volunteer? Sure, come on up. Welcome to Carl's store. I've got a, let's see, I'm selling cups candy, and uh, a white paper and some pens. Hi, welcome. I'm Carl. Nice to meet you. Hi, What's your name? Kimber. Kimber. Where do you come from? Uh, a couple miles up the road. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks for traveling to Carl's store here. Uh, why don't you look around? These are fabulous. Yeah. So you particularly <laughs> like the glasses, huh? Yeah, yeah. they come with Bailey's or coffee. Yeah, yeah. We actually have some coffee out in the lobby we can put in them. Yeah, yeah. Got, I got a um, sale going on just today on these, actually. Yeah, it's negative pricing. I'll pay you a dollar to take them. <laughs> yeah. You interested? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Well, um, 
and, and these other things are interesting. If you don't like cups, these candies are quite quite candies nice. Are good. Yeah. <laughs> would you would you like uh, to buy one of these for negative sure. money? <laughs> there you go. Great. Well, thanks for coming in. All yeah. Right. Can I, oh, can I grab your name or something so I can reach out to you with other uh, promotions in the future? Sure. Write it down. Okay. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. You. Yeah. Okay. Now one more brave volunteer. All right. All the way in the back. Come on up. Now this time, uh, welcome to Carl's, you know, usual run-of-the-mill static website store. <laughs> <laughs> Still loading suspense, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Superman. Right, so yeah. well, okay, so I, I'm not even going to welcome you. Okay. Yeah, the right. Thank you. Okay, then. No, I just mean, like, pretend, pretend <laughs> this is the store. Just, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, pretend this is the store. All right. This the is website store. store. So. Got it. Um, can I get some help? <laughs> <laughs> This store sucks. <laughs> I don't know anything about your product. Is there anybody who can help me? Just take it across. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get the idea. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's the theme of the talk is we're trying to change our website from static to engaging, right? So he comes once. We have four different products. It's up to him to pick one. He starts spending a lot of time with the glasses like she did. I wouldn't have done anything different. I would, would have just still had the candy there. He comes back three times. I wouldn't have ever welcomed him. Same exact store would be right here, you know. Nothing would have changed. It wouldn't have been personalized. So what, what can you do differently? Well, you saw some examples as I was talking. I think the first thing a really good sales, not that I'm the best salesperson, but um, we all have to start thinking that way. Um, and you know, and I, here I mean a good salesperson, a consultative salesperson. We've all had that experience. We've had terrible salespeople, but a good one. The first one is a warm and well, relevant welcome. Hi, good to see you. you know, what's your name? Now, often you're not going to ask that on your website, but let me show you some examples of how companies are, are doing that kind of thing. So this is Gardner's. It's an e-commerce company. And they're saying, depending on the different channel you get to the site from, they're welcoming you in a different way. So they were getting a lot of people coming in from Pinterest and um, coming to the site, and I think Pinterest people are browsers by nature, and so they would browse around Pinterest, browse over to gardeners, and browse on off, and nothing would ever happen from them. So they had um, terrible, um, you know, it was um, one-sixth as good conversion rate from Pinterest visitors as other visitors to their site. So I well, what can we do about it? Why don't we say, look, we know you're from Pinterest, welcome, you know, here's, here's a coupon for you. Simply doing that, and they've been tweaking it and doing other interesting things, but they increased it to um, back up to match the rest of their, to re the rest of their visitors, and they were getting um, 3x the revenue they were getting before from the Pinterest channel. So they got excited about that. They're like, well, who else can we welcome and be, you know, be friendly about? And I think the reason this is so compelling is it's actually the first rule of sales. When I was taught to sell, the head of sales at my organization said to me, you must begin every presentation you ever make, oh, I should have done it here, by saying the following thing. Last night, or whenever, as I was preparing for this presentation, I was thinking about you. And I thought you might have some of the following questions as you were sitting here. And then you list the questions, and you say, is that right? What about, you know, any more? And that's really effective, because you're like, first of all, I was thinking about you. You actually have to do it. <laughs> And you're communicating. It's about you. It's not about me and all my ideas. It's about you. And I'm sure you have questions. You know, so you're, you're thinking about them, and it's a great welcome. And so they started doing this as a company and saying, who's coming to our site? What do they feel when they get there? Oh, they're coming from here. What are they feeling? And so how else could we welcome them? So they did that with um, international people. So they're gardening. So it's a compo like compost. You know, it's gardening supply stuff. And... Um, you come internationally and think, can you really ship this to me and wherever I am? That's a common question. So, hey, welcome. We have shipping for you, right? Significant increase in, in uh, putting stuff in the cart and buying because you thought about me and what I'm feeling as I come here. So I'm going to show a bunch of all just examples. And, um, and so because this is a mode of thinking, and that's the main thing. I'm not trying to communicate like our product or a certain technique. I'm trying to think this is how we have to think and make our, our products um, 
our websites behave. So I, I'm using lots of examples with Adam's permission from this website, because I was trying to think, well, what's a website we've all been to recently that we can talk about together? So my last example in each section will be from there. So if you um, were coming to Drupal Camp Atlanta website, it should change depending on lots of different things, and we'll show examples of it. But one is um, the, de the day and location, right? So if you're coming to it today, it should be a very different site than if you came to it a week ago, right? Because we're kind of in session right now. So maybe if you're coming from, um, you know, um, California down where it's doing the tweets down there, um, it, it could, you know, say, hey, join the tweets and learn. But, you know, if it's someone coming from Atlanta right now, it should little call out, point to the date, say, it's right now, click here to get Google Map directions, come on over, you're missing out, right? Welcome, we're thinking of you. Let me just pause, is this making sense? Sounds good? Okay. So, um, anyone else want to come to the store? <laughs> get, get a candy? Um, so the next thing is, no, our, our, our volunteers didn't do this, but you know what often happens, you come to the store, you're like, you know, Glasses, candy, what? <laughs> like, and just leave. You know, just boom, you're in and out. And a good salesperson would be like, well, wait, wait, take another look. These, these are special candies. You know, like these are made just for you. Take another look. There's something interesting here for you. So how can a website do that? Well, it is possible to detect when someone's cursor is going to leave the top of the page, right? It's uh, called bounce detection. It, we, we offer it, but you can get it in other ways. And so at that, that big, that black there is a cursor you know, mouse. And so as you're going, you just cross over the plane outside of the page to click on a link or to, to en enter a URL. Not a pop-up, not one of those pop-ups that you can't do anything without dismissing it. You know, but because you could go, you could still leave, it wouldn't stop you. But boom, the, the page changes with, with this kind of, you know, um, pop-up or with, you know, call out or even text on the page. You can just change it and say, wait, wait, before you go, take another look. So MIT Technology Review is doing this, and they had a 10x increase uh, versus control with people who, are, who, who get shown this message as they're going to leave. So they come, if you, if you bounce after like two seconds, they don't show it to you. But if you've been there for a while, you look at one article, and then you go to leave. It's like, hey, here's another relevant article. It's kind of relevant to what you just looked at. Stay. They get paid with ad revenue, so really, really helpful to them. So um, I'll just let me. Um, can I just go to a browser here? And you said that's not a pop-up. Yeah, it's it, it's it looks like a pop-up, but it's not that pop-up technology. That's a, a new window that like blocks you from going to any other window. But it, it's a it's a box on your screen. It's like but, Ajax. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just jump in here and help Carl in case we can't get to the. the yeah, let's try to get body to today. Um, Carl. Carl is also uh, doing a demo in the demo room at 4 o'clock. So to actually show you kind of in and out how this works, the demos rooms, you walk down the hall. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it's on the left. Yeah, we have Wi-Fi problems here. Where's the Wi-Fi? Oh, that's the... Oh, here it is. Yeah. Oh, we're on Chally's. Okay, it's kind of going. Okay, let's... Yeah, yeah. Oh, you... Yeah. Well, here, I'll just do an example here. So this is from our own um, site. So if I'm on here, let's see if it's on. I look around and I go watch my cursor as I'm going to leave. See, light box, oh, well, there we go. And see, this is a particularly big one. But it's not a pop-up in the sense if I click here, it just goes away. You know, so it's just like text. And it could have been like a little call out speech bubble or like, you know, could have changed this text. But take another look, people. Is it under PowerPoint? Okay. Uh, oh, so I'm showing an example of ours there too. So, um, so how can we do it here? Well, you know, so not not today anymore, but you know, a couple of weeks ago, if we were coming to this site, you browse around. Maybe you spend a minute on it, two minutes on it. You're quite quite interested, but you're going to leave. You know, and as you go to leave, you just say, "Well, wait a minute. Before you leave, look at this video. You know, of, of Adam talking, <laughs> and look at the great stuff that you're going to be missing. You know, people are going to click." Stay in the video. You have a call to action or whatever, but boom, you've engaged them. Get take one more look. Exactly. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. He, just to repeat the question. He's saying, isn't isn't there a danger with like that kind of thing of annoying people, and if, especially if you're blocking them from what they came for? Yes, it's definitely. You definitely have to think that through, and you wouldn't want. You wouldn't want 15 of these popping up and stuff, you know, and I'll show you more examples. The most compelling personalizations are not, not a pop-up, but like change this text here. So it's just part of the experience. That's what most of our, like our customers do. That's what we recommend. But, but like in this case, if you just change this text as they go to leave, they might not see it. So you might want to be a little more direct. That you're, you're about to lose them, perhaps forever. Last chance, you know, you can be a little more pushy as a salesperson. But I think that's what's so important. You don't want to do one of those pop-ups where it locks the screen until you dismiss it. That people are just like, you know, f you, I'm get, get me out of here. You know, like um, this. It, it, like I should have shown on our site. If I had kept going and just typed, I, I would have been able to type. I can just go. It's just, it's just that the page changed and kind of caught my attention. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, this is just a thought more than a question, but you could extend it. By keeping certain points of the mouse that goes around the web page and assume the person's thought process. Yes. And then provide some information as well. Or change, not, not, not provide it, you know, block straight in front of their nose, but rather change certain parts which psychologically affect their way of thinking with the person. Yeah, and that's, that's a great transition. That's, that's, what, that's the next section. So, so you, know, you, you greet them, and then if they just are about to leave, you're like, wait, wait, hold on. But the, the most interesting part is uh, most people's buying process, whatever you know, you're selling, it, it takes time, right? They're, they don't come to the university one time, probably. They come to the website. They look at 15 others. They're applying competitively. They're like, ah, I don't know. They come back again. They have their friend look at it. You know, that's probably true for most sites. It's a multi-step multi process. And so a good salesperson is building a relationship over time. And, and as our head of sales always says, always add value. With every touch, add value. Don't be like, just set, will you buy my thing? Like, hey, here's a white paper that's interesting. Hey, you know, you're always adding value. And so how can a website do that? And it's just what you're saying. Like, don't, on their second visit, their third visit, it shouldn't be the same website. Like, if she came back next time, I probably would have put these to the back of my store, you know, and sort of kept the glasses toward the front because that's what she had really been interested in before. So our site should be doing that, right? And so um, let's look at some examples. So this is Acquia's website, and they're using, using us, and they, they, um, they, they, what they're trying to do here is say, um, and it's changed. I think right now this is showing for everybody. But um, they, were, they were using it before because they saw it to be effective, but they were showing it only to developers. So based on your behavior, you, you can buy a bunch of different stuff on, on Aquia. You can do marketing stuff. You can buy hosting. But one persona of people who are coming there are developers, and so um, they, they want to target that developer. So this text right here, it's kind of at the bottom, is inserted into the page if you're a developer. And as I said, I think it's inserted for everybody right now, but they were doing it so if you could, um, based on the fact that you came in here and looked at certain resources and certain pages that would only a developer would be interested in, we have a f fairly good idea that you're a developer as a persona, and then leveraging that persona, now we're gonna to change the actual text of the site to, to sort of sell you on something that's relevant to, to a um, developer. Is that kind of what you were talking about? I was more thinking of the lines of like when the lady approaches the store, you try to learn her eye movements. Oh, I see. Okay. If you're on the same page, but you're actually tracking the mouse. Because that's mm. what people want me to do now, to move the mouse and speak to the Yeah, mouse. yeah. You follow that, you record it, and then translate it into something that you assume that that person might be interested in. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, there's definitely, there are, there is mouse tracking software like that. We, we're tracking clicks. We're not tracking, but the, to the next level would be to get the, uh, to get the um, uh, mouse movement. Other questions on this one? I was thinking, I'd show an example here. So suppose you come um, to this site um, again. Oh, whoops. And you see up at the top, you know, here's an example. Maybe we just do a simple thing where we slide the, the site down. And you say, you know, second visit, third visit. You don't want to say this to the first person. But if I've come here three times, and maybe most interestingly, if I've come here three times in three days, like I did, I'm probably making a decision, am I going to come or not? You know, like, is it worth it? Is it, what should I do? You know, like, and so if you witness that behavior, wow, three times in three days, put some kind of, hey, welcome back. Like, give us your email. Give us a call or whatever's an appropriate 
welcome to, to, to say to that person, I know you're on the verge of decision. Let's help you, let's help you cross over and, and come. Um, another example would be sort of based on kinds of people. So we, we sponsored this. We're, we're not an attendee. So probably most of you who are here who aren't sponsors never clicked on that sponsor's link. You know, like if you came to this site, you clicked on the conference FAQ or sponsored us for the sponsors. I'm not going to click there. I clicked on there a lot. You know, like so the, but prior to knowing me, um, when I clicked on that sponsor's link, um, that I'm sort of identifying myself as a persona, like we we're talking with the Aquia site, a developer. I'm a, I'm a sponsor or kind of in that category. And so it should be noted and then the site personalized for me based on that. You could do all sorts of stuff right on this homepage, change the banner, you know, um, ch change, rotate in something that sort of catches my attention or just do a, a, a you know, particularly ugly call out here, but sort of call out to the sponsor thing when I'm coming or when I go to leave that says, you know, hey, this is a great conference. You know, you should definitely come here um, to, try, to try to grab my attention. All right, well, moving along here. Um, close the deal. So you're building that trust. You're personalizing. In the end, a good salesperson's got to ask for the deal, right? You've got to close for it. And, of course, all of our websites have lead forms or, you know, purchase uh, things are, are trying to capture people in different way, ways. Um, one one uh, example there, this is from our own site, is just do a progressive call to action, right? So we, we have a blog. A lot, a lot of people come to our blog. The goal of a blog is different from our main website. We're just trying to get people more and more engaged, and hopefully they'll come over to the website. Um, so we capture email on the blog. We don't spam people from that like most people don't. We're just going to send a newsletter, right? But what happens when someone enters an email into there? Um, usually, for most websites, that form just stays there. It's the most precious, uh, you know, what do you call it, area block on that page. And so um, we should do a dynamic call to action. So what we do is basically after someone um, enters their email there, um, the next thing we do is have the next step in the relationship, the next conversion that we want. Hey, why don't you come over and request a demo? That shows for them, it doesn't show for you, know, you as a first time visitor, we're making really good use of that space. Um, and then, um, yeah, I'll skip this thing. This is a large hosting company which is sort of selling right in app, but I'll sort of skip that example. So let's talk um, about a couple examples here. So, I mean, obviously, we're just talking about you gotta ask for the, for the close. And so maybe what, they, what um, th this site could have done is as I'm, um, you know, Again, as I'm bouncing, or maybe in my second or third visit, dynamically say there's only one sponsor slot left, you know, and there's 300, I think there's four or 500 people here, you know, but there's this many people registered. Call this person now to secure it, right? Close me. You, because you personalize, you can close so much more effectively because you can ask for the specific sale. If you're asking for a generic thing, you got to keep it generic and not be as sort of direct. If you know who you're talking to, you can ask them for something that you know they want. You know that I'm pretty interested in sponsoring, ask me for it. And, and similarly, maybe on the conference side, you say, say the same kind of thing. You know, like you're, you're, it, it's filling up or, you know, don't miss out. And then one last little um, set of stories is, this has all been sort of anonymous people on, on websites. But a lot of um, web, sites, web relationships are actually logged in. And a lot of Drupal sites are logged in, community experiences and the like. So what about on that side? And I think you, you can do even more powerful stuff there because you know, you actually know them by name, you know, or, or by email at least. And so here, you know, there's a logged in side of this site that's, um, you know, so this is me logged in. And so you could maybe do a personalization. If I come back logged in again, I'm looking at, you know, oh, where is it? You know, what's the location? How am I going to get there or something? Carl, you haven't proposed a session yet. You know, like propose a session, um, th things like that. So right, per talk to the person right um, in, in the web experience. Um, but in this case, it's sort of make them more successful because you've already, already converted them. Questions? I went fast through that last part, but makes sense? <laughs> all right, well, why don't we wrap up? Um, so I, the last thing I want to do is to just, um, this is sort of all the, has been the, the way to think, and, and let's think about our websites this way. I think this is where the web's going, and it's exciting to be a part of it. The, the next um, two minutes, I just want to talk briefly about how you could do this with us, and, um, 
And then um, also remind you that at four, we're doing a sort of demo thing at room 113. But so if you want to do this with Drupal, our, um, there is an Evergage Drupal module that um, we've worked on with, um, with ourselves and Acquia and Media Current. And um, it's available. And so you can plan to plug that Drupal module in. And what it basically does is drops JavaScript into the page, like just like Google Analytics, um, that lets us capture all the clickstream type stuff. And let you, um, and then um, the JavaScript also receives the, the personalizations that you're going to display. But it also lets you capture any of the logged in server side stuff out of Drupal. So if it's especially in a logged in case, you can capture any of the um, of the um, thing from the schema that you can't that you want in order to use that in the personalization text fields, number fields, and and the like. Um, and then you basically um, can visually actually go to your site, this is our site here, and sort of go through and say, okay, I want to track this click. You can see in green here, I'm tracking all these things that are in green. Track these things, and this is what I'm going to call it when someone does that. And then this yellow at the top, see I'm making a message right there, but you can do it there or say insert it in here and just sort of visually, as a marketer even, not even as a developer, say put that in there and change that based on these kind of rules, you know, where they're coming from. It's probably hard to see, but location, how many times have they visited, what actions have they done. Okay, and it's going to show up. So it's just kind of quick to, to do. But, so I wanted to call that out. And um, that's it. So let's, uh, let's all become salespeople, good salespeople, and help our websites to do that. And we'll see um, greater conversion or achievement of our goal by doing so. so thanks. Thanks.